The Sam Livecast is brought to you by Fixers Living. Check them out on the internet at fixersliving.com or love them on the Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Fixers Living. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. That's what they do. Everybody, welcome to the Sam Livecast. Today's Wednesday. I'm excited for all kinds of reasons. A ton of stuff to go through, but let's look at what's going on in the back room. What's happening back there, boys? Somebody's hey. back. There what's they up? are. We got Max somebody. on the right and Lin Chi on the left. Feels good to be back. You know what? Do you think that there's people who might have just like found us in the past month or so? Uh, absolutely. In the past 10 episodes don't know that who don't Lin know is. who he is. Should so I introduce I'll... myself? Yeah. Yes, go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Lin. AKA Chief. Chief. AKA Long Lin. Long Lin. Some people call me Big Boy. Some people call <laughs> you Baby Yao. Baby Yao. And why, wow. wait, you're sitting down. Why would people call you that? Because he's large. There you go. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> six five? Six five six six. Six five six. Wait, what is it? I think I'm officially six five, but people keep saying that I'm about six six. Because I meet people who are six five. So Sam, is that like me six, calling six. myself six feet tall? Yeah, pretty much. Because I'm not. <laughs> Uh, so for people that don't know, Lynn was here from the very beginning of the live cast mm-hmm. and, uh, at the end of January, he took a sabbatical for, um, two months. Yeah. I went to LA. You mm-hmm. went to LA and uh, what'd you go to do? You know, right now I can't say anything about it, mm-hmm. but let's just say I was, uh, shooting a TV show. Oh, wow. So, oh, you know, along the same lines that as this, sounds cool. but just a bigger production. That sounds cool. I wonder oh, if we'll be able to talk about that in future weeks. <laughs> F you. He goes, sort of like this, but a bigger production. <laughs> what a tool. And hey, don't well, forget, what, he got engaged right before and he I did. Left, I got too. engaged, I right? Engaged a lot of stuff left. has happened. This a lot of things have changed. This is a whole new thing. Uh, by the way, nice to have you back. Thank you. Good to be but, back. But at the same time, with you being back, it means that Allie is not here. Mm-hmm. And Allie uh, filled sad. in temporarily for you. Uh, she's adorable. Jason Marco, text artist, uh, uh, Mrs. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Text artist. And uh, she was awesome while she was here. And I think she knew that there was a chance that this was going to happen. We didn't really know how long you were going to be gone. Or if when you came back, you would want to come back. Mm -hmm. We had no idea, right? Yeah. I mean, it was so up in the air, but I'm glad things worked out the way. So I just like to say, like to thank Allie for for being the trooper that she was and hanging in. Absolutely. I don't think it's easy stepping into a position of of a... uh, a person is a big personality on a show and taking over for them. And, and we are not the easiest people we are to not deal the with. So. People to deal with. <laughs> As Lynn has experienced. And by the way, by the way, about. if you also for people that don't know that you, you and I are father and son. Yes. And that should be obvious by the way we argue, but <laughs> before we get into everything, I just mm. want to say Facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy is where you can Ask questions and uh, let us know your comments and give That's us right, recipes yeah, you guys want to see done. A lot of people have been requesting gluten free recently, <laughs> and I think it's something we should do. I, it's a, it's a, it's fairly I feel prominent. Bad. Did, you, now. did you see? Did you see my reaction just then? Yeah, you yeah. went. Oh. This went. Oh. I, I don't did, know how it happened. I know, I know. I have, I have. How heard, did this happen? Isn't there that that argument that? We have all these dietary restrictions now because of all the the junk that we eat, and like every, with every generation, people get more and more dietary restrictions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now gluten free is kind of popular. Now it used to be something that maybe could have been well. Rare. Wait, you say popular, but do you mean popular? Or do you mean necessary for people? Both, because I think it started out as being necessary, and then yeah. you know people were like, okay, like there might be something to cutting gluten out of your diet. I don't know. People have told me mixed feelings. Some people say that it's kind of a sham. Some people say that they feel great after cutting out uh-huh. gluten. But so that's what I've heard uh, that is that the people, because people are trying just now adopting gluten-free as a lifestyle. As a lifestyle. Ra- and it, what it's doing is it's marginalizing the people that actually do have gluten gluten allergies and need right. only gluten-free because people like my dad have the reaction when they hear gluten-free. Ugh. But what are you going to like? <laughs> oh, no, what are you going to hear? Cook look, something for diabetic people. Ugh. No, I'm not going to... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know what, and this is unfair, but I kind of put it in the same, the same position as like the peanut thing. 
Uh, we talked about that. I was on an airplane one day. They make their little announcement. They come down the aisle. They go, what would you like? Go off some of the cashews that I heard you talk about. She goes, uh, no cashews. I go, you're out already. I'm in like row six. She goes, no, no, no. Someone has a peanut allergy. We can't, can't give you cashews. Oh, God. And I said, tell you what, I promise I won't force any into their mouth. <laughs> she goes, no, we in can't open them in the air on a plane in, a, in an enclosed environment. Wait, so, that bad? That bad. But I went wow. to camp There's and one who- of the... One of the staples that they give little kids at camp is peanut butter. Hey, I was and there. now, many years later, banned. I was there when they changed it. Like, literally one year, peanut butter sandwiches all the time. The next year, any peanut flakes in the air can, can kill you. So what I don't understand <laughs> wow. is, were kids sick and they didn't know why, and suddenly they started figuring out it was peanut butter? I guess so. Because all of a sudden you go from yes, everybody's got peanut butter now. No, nobody does. And no, it, and now if you look at the late, if you look at uh, packaging labels, mm-hmm. it could be marshmallows, and it would say on the bottom, "This was made in a factory." That's not that uses nuts in some of the other products, yeah. not this one. Just so you know, I guess it's that sensitive, people. Yeah, it's crazy. Ugh. Look at that. I mean, that's pretty serious right there. Like peanuts, peanuts are so peanut incredibly dust dangerous. Everywhere. <laughs> I wonder where that is. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a friend in college that I remember we, we tried to play a cruel joke on him once because we belie- we knew he was allergic to yeah. just about everything, including peanuts. And one day, you know, we were, boys will be boys. We were wrestling in our dorm room and um, naked. Wh- no, not naked. Naked boxer shorts. Oh, God. You know, just the, checking. There was, on. Whatever. There, there was skin exposed. And this is where the story is going. My friend got a jar of peanut butter and literally rubbed it on his arm. And they stopped. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, like we knew you're allergic, but this I mean, we're just playing with you. He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. And then he went to go wash it off and he broke out into hives like all over. Wow. His arm started Ooh. taking his allergy medication. Really? I mean, he forgave us eventually, but it was one of those things where like, wow, this guy is sensitive. Like if you have peanut on your hand and you go shake his hand, yeah, like he'll break out. He'll break out. Hey, for anybody but- that doesn't necessarily know what gluten is, it's a protein, a protein complex found in wheat, barley, rye, and trit. Tritical, trickly. I don't know that word. Anyway, it's a common protein complex in a lot of food. A so lot of foods. it's it's not you know going gluten free is not something easily done. I don't think. By the way, can I just say? Yeah. So I might have been joking when I said asked if you guys were wrestling naked, yeah. but when I heard you say let's rub peanut butter on the guy's body, <laughs> come on now. You tell me that there wasn't a little. I wasn't involved in this. I was more involved in cleaning up the mess. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's just put it that way. All right, oh, all right, all right. So anyway, anyway. So Lynn's back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we. Uh, when did you get back? I came back about. Well, it's weird because I came back about a week ago, and then I had to leave again. Right. So you had um, other stuff to do. I, I just got back. Just you just got back anyway. Yeah. Back. Anyway, back. Welcome back. Uh, you and I had uh, dim sum. Oh, yeah. Mm, one day last week. I'm jealous. I have pictures of it. Oh, Do you yes. want me to go now? Pictures, yeah. Boom. It's called the Yumcha Cafe. Mm. And Yumcha is, uh, is uh, what, what translates exactly to what, Lynn? Oh, that's Cantonese, but I think it's still like little little like little snacks or little something. Little snacks like or something. Okay. Yeah. So this is the place. So most, if you've had dim sum, which for lack of a better term is kind of like a Chinese brunch, sort of. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really, it's lunchtime, so it's brunch food, but it's not breakfasty food, but it's brunchy kind of Chinese food, I guess, if, if you had to give it a white person's description. Um, <laughs> and normally you go to a restaurant and you sit and they either push carts around and you choose off the cart or you order off the menu. And when you order off the menu, at least here in uh, North America, they, some places call it Hong Kong style because I think most restaurants in Hong Kong have done away with the carts just because of space they find it's much more efficient <laughs> for re- if any, restaurants for anybody that doesn't know that hong kong is an extremely metropolitan oh. city that's very similar to new york in scope and size so it's not a place that they can have a big sprawling everybody everything's restaurant. close and rest tables are Packed close in, and yeah. not a lot of room so anyway so hong kong style is is what they refer to it here i don't know what they refer to it there but this place go back to the picture is neither of those mm-hmm. This is basically a buffet, and you can see right there, people behind the counter, and you go up, and you choose from you know all these things that are along this section here, 
And then over here, you can see all the little steamer baskets. Yeah. Oh, cool. So there's rice dishes and noodle dishes over in this section. And then Homsoigo, actually the greasiest Homsoigo I've ever had. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was really greasy. Really? Man. I mean, it was and cold. So this is not high dollar, fancy dim sum. Mm -mm. This is basically the fast food of dim sum. But as I like to say... I think like the worst Chinese food is better than a lot of the other Western food, at least to me. Mm -hmm. I like it. And then here's what we got. Here's the table with some of the stuff on it. Wow. Yeah. So these were, where are we? These guys were those green onion. Uh, um, They're like dumplings, right? Dumplings. Just they were, those were things. really good. This uh, right in the center in that bag was the hum soy go. It was greasy as shit. <laughs> I couldn't eat that. I had I microwaved it the next day, and I took them, and it was got even greasier. Yeah, it basically the entire plate after I microwaved it was a pool of grease, and then <laughs> when I bit into it, there was even more grease. So like there's just no Jeez. getting the grease out of it. You can't you can't see the side of the bag, but the side of the bag as we as the the hum soy go were in the bag like one minute we carried them over to the table. Yeah, the whole side of the bag was grease <laughs> coming through the brown paper bag. Oh my goodness! It was still good. Still good. It was still good. I mean, I I dig. I I like it a lot. So I'm a, look. I'm a dim sum fan. I'm always gonna have. I'm always gonna have that stuff. Oh, right? Sam, to to prevent you know eternal shame among my people, yum cha actually means drinking tea. I should know that. Oh, it does. It's like <laughs> uh, the literal meaning is drinking tea. tea yum cha. Eternal oh, shame. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I would make know. sense. Even that though I'm not sense. Cantonese, I should know that. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you for checking. That's good. That's good. Uh, one comment, uh, YouTube comment off of the Shrimp Louie episode that uh, aired last week. Mm -hmm. Blake writes, whoa, you're kind of a dick. Great job. I, I, don't, I don't even know what that, what that, I don't even know what that we were talking about. <laughs> this, the shit off, the comments off the YouTube are so random. I don't understand. YouTube is notorious for like the worst comments like you could I, like i don't know i'm surprised what, no one's called you like you know like called you out on oh, being a jew or something oh you know? wait you know like, what hey go oh, to uh, go to our, our 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 great one from gummy bear i think lynn was gone when we unearthed that gem oh yeah how about we this have this thing? one recurring one that we go to just to just so that we can stay humble exactly here's what gummy bear says hey i remember this faggot wow everyone in cali sounds like a total stoner douche yep pretty you much That's thank you us. youtube it's the uh, the veil of the internet, man. People think they can say whatever they want. Whoa, you're it's kind of a paradise. dick. So I'd like Blake, Blake, please write back and tell me what you were referring to. I would like to know. I would like to know. Uh, let's see. I got some other pictures to go through. Do you remember when um, I got that packet of letters from an elementary school, Bernie Elementary? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From a class of second graders. Apparently, once a month, they choose somebody... It could be anybody to write to, and then all the class writes that person letters. They it's, they practice their penmanship and their words and all that kind of stuff. So wait, can we just really quickly not yeah. to get sidetracked? But is there anything more useless nowadays than penmanship? Do kids still learn <laughs> that? I mean, I remember. It's an interesting what, don't question. Don't you remember but standing you, at the chalkboard writing in cursive? Yeah. Do they still do that? I think cursive is out. It's it was so useless. I mean, nobody oh. writes letters anymore. Nobody. But I, I mean, don't you think I'm not it's saying something that, it's that they need to skill. know? No, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's a useless skill. But I'm saying I'm saying in the in the past incarnation of teaching penmanship <clears throat> and stuff, the way that we learned it, right. I feel like that's done. You don't like that's pointless. You don't need to. I, I hear you. I, I I feel I like it be it would be weird if you didn't teach, because you know. People our age have terrible handwriting, and we went through terrible. that class. So terrible. if you don't teach anything at all, I can only imagine the <laughs> horrors that come out. <laughs> can I tell you but, something uh, that's cool? But, and people don't like, people don't use it very often. I'll tell you this: Kelly's birthday party um, while you were away, Lynn. Sorry, I know I missed that. Um, any present that she got, she hand wrote a thank you note and sent it out. That's nice. That's hand classy. Wrote. Really classy. So I do think it's important that sometimes people. Uh, I didn't get one of those. Yeah, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. You did. I never got one. I saw her hand it to you. It's probably over there. Look beside the computer. Tool. No. You got <laughs> no, it. It's whatever. a little green and blue envelope. You're such an ass. No, whatever. Anyway, so the kids write me all these letters. What's the obvious thing to do? 
Write them back. Write them back. So I wrote back one letter to each of the 26 or 27 kids, tried to reference something that the child had said in the letter, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Teacher emailed back. She goes, no one's written back the kids before. No one. Really? They've written San Diego Padres and Chargers and blah, 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 all these people. No one's written back. So I said, uh, I'm honored. That it was fun to do, and it means a lot to me, and blah, blah, blah. And somehow the conversation came up, and I said, I'd love to come cook for the kids one day. This morning was the day. So a class of 27 kids, no big deal. I'll go make something. And then in a, far, a further email, she's like, you know, we try to do everything as groups here. Would it be okay if you cooked for all the second graders? Or, yeah, what's well, a few more second graders? No problem. 100 second graders. Oh, wow. wow. And 30 staff. What is that? Like 107 year olds? 107 yeah, year olds. Seven and second year olds. Right, 107 year olds. So I'm trying to. Sorry, I just got to get this bowl. It's okay. I'm trying to think about what I'm going to make for them. Uh huh. And I decide I want to make something simple, right? Yes. I decided I'm going to make veggie fajitas because they have a garden there and they grow things. And I thought vegetables would be safe. No meat for the, the vegetarian kids in the, in the, in the group that might not want it. Which I bet there's a lot higher percentage today than when yeah, you were I'm in sure second grade. Is, you know? right? mm -hmm. So I, I thought about this. So this bowl right here, this is a pretty big bowl, right? Yeah, it is. Hold it up to three. Nope, that's two. There you go. <laughs> Look at it. That's a big bowl, right? It's a big ass Take ball. my computer. This was this morning. Oh, Those are full. red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers, uh, carrots, zucchini, and red onion. I'm not going to lie. It's freaking beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. Yeah. All sauté. All the colors. That was a lot. But Wait, I wanted that something of... that I could. I cooked about. What is it again? 90%. I could just finish there. Red, yellow, green peppers, mm -hmm. zucchini, red onion, carrots. Wow. By the way, everything, this stupid huge bowl, right? Yeah. It was like this. Whoosh. You can't really tell from there, but it was really full. Yeah. Cut by hand by me. Nice. Everything. It took me hours last night and then this morning. Do you have some pictures morning. of the kids? Oh, wouldn't it be good if I did? Oh, boom. Oh. There they are. Look at them. <laughs> that's sweet. Okay, that's epic. Isn't that fun? What are you doing? <laughs> you are such a dork. That was supposed that You know, the teacher said, all right, one we'll crazy picture. We'll do a picture. funny one, yeah. All right, and then there's one more that I got uh, in the classroom. But you got to check this out. Okay, so see this kid right he, He's making a pencil mustache, right? <laughs> that kid. <laughs> this little girl there, look at her up on the table. <laughs> As I'm standing there ready to take the pictures, yeah. I hear the teacher, Mrs. Donovan, pull back for a sec. Yeah. She's right here. No, back further. Sorry. It's okay. Mrs. Donovan. Uh -huh. As I'm getting ready to take the picture, I hear her go like this. All right. Don't put, like, Susan, don't put your pencils in your eyes. Oh, jeez. And I go, did I just hear you say don't put pencils in your eyes? She goes, yes, that's one of the things we practice here in the room. What? Wait, does that mean like, yeah. I don't know what don't the kid even... was doing. I didn't really see. But they're second graders. Oh, As geez. I watched, so they brought them out one class at a time. It was four classes of like 26 kids. Yeah. As they bring them out and they're sitting them down and they're doing their thing with them. And then they get them up and then they're taking them away and stuff. I look at one of the, the helper moms and I say, it's like herding cats. And she goes, <laughs> it's exactly what it's like. And then I stood and I watched for a minute and I go, but it's actually quiet. It's, it's noisier than her. Cats are a lot quieter. These kids make a lot of noise. And then they you know, want to ask questions and they're like this, Sam. Sam, I go, yes, sweetheart. I go, um, um, okay, well, once my dad, um, yeah, my dad, so, so wait, uh, um, wait, once, once my dad, um, made cookies with me and, and then, and then, and then it was really funny. <laughs> oh. That's what seven, that's what seven great, seven, seven year olds. They can't tell stories. <laughs> I loved I loved each and every one and of you them. Didn't even, wait, do you have video? You could have gotten video. Yeah, of them I didn't take any video. I guess that might be. But a as creepy. I'm, but as I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> cooking all these peppers this morning, right? In the pan, and I'm stirring. I so I did the, all the peppers separately. I mean, I've got two pans going. I got up at five thirty. I was just over consumed with how I was going to make this happen, and I didn't have enough time, mm -hmm. and I had to go buy the little tortillas still today, and I go to Restaurant Depot for that. So I'm up early. I was thinking about it all night. I'm up early. It's like quarter to six. And I'm standing in the kitchen behind me, sauteing all these peppers. And I look and I go, what the fuck is that? There's like a little gray thing. 
in the middle of the pan. Mm -hmm. I go, what the hell is that? Did that come out of one of these peppers? That is so weird. And I put it down. I'm cooking and scoop up stuff. And a few minutes later, there it is. It's in another set of peppers. I go, whoa, this is crazy. Where are these things coming from? <laughs> I finally figured out what it was. Look at this. It was the foot off of the mandolin that I used to cut the onions with. What? You had to back up just a little bit. You can see it's missing right there. Uh. This gray thing right here <laughs> was in the pan. I almost served that to a kid. <laughs> wow. And I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I am so glad I that did. That would not have been good. No, it wouldn't have been good. <laughs> okay, what are we cooking today? Uh, here's what we're making. We're making, and I've modified it from what it was going to be this morning to what it is now, and I'll explain it when we get there. We're making a chopped, grilled chicken and bacon Caesar salad. Hell yes. Oh, it's going to be so good. Hell yes. I'm totally ready for it. It's not going to take very long. All right. I can handle it if you can handle it. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Let's go, boys. All right, so here's the plan. I've got a couple things I have to do. I have to cook some chicken. I have to make the salad. I've got to cook some bacon, and I have to make a dressing. The dressing got really simple because of one thing that happened today. I'll tell you that. But let me get going first with the bacon. You're doing it in the wok? Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, well, the wok is just a big pan. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's going to splatter some grease, and it'll actually keep it, you know, self-contained a little bit uh, that's why i do my bacon in the oven oh do you mm -hmm. well you're a baby so i don't want to do my bacon in the oven i want to do it here <laughs> so look at this bacon that i found this is this is applewood smoked pepper coated Ooh! wow Wow, it smells really good. It's a lot of flavor in you're a bacon. Not, you're not kidding. The really messy hands too, actually. So, and look at and everybody knows I'm a fan of the ready bacon, but I'm starting to feel like the like, good like bacon like this is is really the way to go. The thick bacon is just so. Well, great. the thick is good, but this just looked like it had a lot of flavor. So this is a essentially a chopped salad. So I don't want. Uh oh. Do you hear that? What? It was just something weird in my ear. So I want this bacon to be in fairly small pieces. Oh, I'm digging the looks of this bacon and the Yo, smell. Yeah, it looks it. amazing. Really good. All right, so as soon as I get this going, because this will take probably the longest, this will be a five minute, 10 minute thing. Okay, into the pan. Man, I love that sound. Isn't it good? Did you hear? Oh, I have to do this. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's a cooking show. Ah, you know what? Sorry. What am I doing? I was gonna save the hold this hold part of this bacon back, but I might as well just cut it all up, right? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. I think I'm gonna be buying this again. I think. How much was that pack? Mm. Well, it's not that much. I want to say it's like a half a pound. It's 10 ounces, so it's a little bit more. Uh, it was like four something. It might have been on sale. I don't really remember. That's not good. That's not good. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Now, let me just give this a little turn. Doing its thing in here really nice. Look at all the, you can see the pepper, right? Like look right here on that thing. Yeah. Look how amazing this oh, looks. Oh yeah. I'm talking about. This is gonna make a great salad, ladies and gentlemen. And the smell of it is wonderful. So, I think the initial smoke has come off of that and I might be okay. All right, so here's my standard way of cooking uh, chicken breast. I think we've done this before. And if you haven't seen it, it's what I like to do because it, for me, it, it's, well, I say this is, this is how you level the chicken playing field. The problem, <laughs> good line? Yeah, pretty good line, I like it. Here's the deal, the problem with most chicken breasts is this, it's the size issue. Look, if I hold this thing properly, it's thick here and it's super thin here. Yeah. So if I try and cook this thing in a pan, the thin side's gonna cook before the fat side's done. 
If I cook the fat side till it's perfect, the thin side is what? It's Overcooked. completely dried out and crappy. And I don't want that. So here's what I like to do. I have to clean my hands. I will, sometimes I put it in a Ziploc bag, but I think I can get away with this. Oh, you take a bottle of something. We'll take a bottle of We Olive uh, aged balsamic vinegar, which is the <laughs> ideal thing to hit a piece of chicken with. Of course. <laughs> and then we're simply just going to flatten this guy out. What we're trying to do is you're trying to get this down so an even thickness. And it doesn't matter what that thickness is. It can be an inch, it can be a half an inch, it can be a quarter of an inch. As long as it's even all the way, you're going to be able to cook this evenly. And for this salad, this is going to be absolutely perfect. So the Ziploc bag thing is good because you can see what you're doing. And I can't see what I'm doing here. But you're a pro. Don't worry about it, man. Well, I'm something. I don't know if pro is the word. <laughs> but this feels pretty even to me. And the other thing is, the other the benefit is, check it out. Look how wide it is, right? Oh, so yeah. I've now maximized that piece of chicken. And now I can, I honestly, I'm getting more out of it, really in a silly kind of way. Okay, this now goes on the heat. Here's how I like to season this. Very simply, salt, pepper, olive oil, that's all. So, olive oil here. Pepper, salt. Flip it over, same thing, olive oil, pepper, and it's going to cook way faster than if it had uh, not been thinned out like this. Okay? Good. That bacon is just smelling unbelievable, by the way. You know what I dig? I'm really digging all the pepper on here. Yeah. I'm going to turn on this flat top for some bread, some crouton-y like things that I'm going to put into this. As soon as that's hot, this is going to be ready to go in. Let me make the dressing. It doesn't take very long, this whole thing, but it's a couple of steps. So, oh, I know what I was going to do. Here's the, here, okay. So I was going to make my own dressing. And my own dressing was going to consist of uh, sour cream, um, uh, fish sauce instead of anchovies. Fish sauce is made from anchovies. Oh. Worcestershire, lemon juice, garlic. Kind of the traditional mix that would go into a, a Caesar dressing, kind of, using sour cream as its base. But so when I went to that school today, I had this mix of sour cream and a little tiny bit of hot sauce and some lime juice to put on the, the uh, tortillas before the the vegetable fajitas went on. So I brought it home, I have like this much left in the container and I go, that's kind of boring, let me season it up a little bit, spice it up a bit, put it in the fridge, and then when I make a, tor a tortilla with some stuff on it, I can use this. So what did I grab? I grabbed what, who remembers Terry? Terry Bannister? Terry Bannister? Yeah, well, yeah I saw the other day, she came to the grocery outlet event. Oh, really? And she gave me this. <laughs> Oh what? My Bacon hot sauce. Of course that exists. So I go, <laughs> well, I wonder if it's any good in here. So I put it in here, and I'm really happy with it. Is it great? So all this is really is lime juice, sour cream, bacon hot sauce. This now is going to become the basis for our dressing. Wow. And nothing more. I'm going to go with that. Okay. pretty cool. The bacon. The bacon's like lardons, it's pretty good. This thing's almost ready to go, to go in here. So, I gotta get my romaine out. I'm thinking this through in my head. I gotta get my romaine out. Oh, the croutony things. Okay, so let me see. Romaine. Remember I said I wanted to do like a chopped version of this salad, right? Yeah. So I got romaine here. I got this going here for the bread. Hey, you know our little, you know how you cut basil in those little ribbons where you roll it up? Chiffonade. Yes. yes. I did that with spinach the other night in this uh, beet burrata salad that I made. Yes. And it made it so much more enjoyable. It was really? so easy to eat. 
chiffonade the spinach. It, was, it took a little bit of time, but it was great. Okay, so watch the bread. Here's what we're gonna do. I've, I've actually got a photo of that beaten burrata salad, so I'm gonna show you guys oh, that nice. in the next episode. I like that. So all I'm trying to do, oh wait. I think this bacon's ready. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna get it out and degrease it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's Holy talking crap. About, right? Look at that. Oh, I can smell the pepper coming off this. I really am really liking this. And if I was real, really on it and clever, I would save this bacon drippings for something. Oh, you're not? I don't know. I really don't do it very often, but I guess I could. Okay, I want to throw this in though. I want this chicken to go in. So now the chicken, oh, okay, simply, simply face down, ready? Felt lucky, yep. That's it. There you go, it's doing its thing. Bacon, mm-hmm, it's really nice. Um, I don't need too much bread, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this. And we're gonna do this. I wanna put just a little crispy, buttery color on this. So I'm gonna take this big chunk and put them face down right here with the butter and just let that do its thing. Kind of like a cheap way of doing a, uh, a crouton. I don't mean cheap and expensive, I mean cheap as in quick rather than cutting them up into little cubes and, and buttering and garlicking, garlicking them and putting them in the oven. Mm -hmm. All right? So, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little garlic to this. Mm. Just to make it a little more Caesar-like, you know? Garlic, 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 two cloves, smoke, sorry. But Max, come over here and take a look. You see right here how, how it's cooking? Yep. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna take this guy now. See, it looks like that. Wow. This is beautiful. Now we just put him this way to put some extra extra marks on here. The marks are gonna help it get super crispy. Okay, garlic. Two garlic cloves in with this. Oh my god. <laughs> A little more of that. Yep. Okay, we're doing really well. I'm gonna flip this chicken now. Give it a little bit more oil for this side. Look how beautiful that is. That's Perfect. a pretty piece of chicken, right? Yep. Uh, Romaine. If my um, scattered brain can pull this off <laughs> while I'm talking and trying to be mindful of the camera, you can do this at home with not very much time. The ends come off. These come off because this is kind of, this romaine is actually on its last legs. But I had it, which is one of the reasons I wanted to use it. So I just like to cut these guys lengthwise two times to make the pieces smaller. Remember, I'm sort of calling this a chopped Caesar 
which means that they're not big pieces, they're little pieces. I feel like I prefer my salads this way. Say what? I think I prefer my salads. Chopped like yeah. that? It's really hard to eat it's like a romaine steak. You know, yeah, isn't kind of, it? With a knife. Like there's those restaurants that do like the, like they'll give you basically like one of these things, you know, cleaned up on your plate. Then you gotta use a knife and fork and it kind of becomes a bit of a hassle. It does, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do two things. Get this bowl out, one. The romaine is going in here to get dressed like this. Okay, so technically Caesar might be the wrong term for this dressing. This might be closer to like a thousand island or something. Sort of like we did with the Louis last week. I don't know where all my tongs are. Forget about that chicken over there. Oh no, I'm coming for that. You know I mean? Let's see how my bread's doing. Bread's nice. Chicken is basically there. A little bit on that side, then it's gonna come off. This is good. Get that a little bit crispier. Let's throw that in. Bacon. How is it? <laughs> it's really good. Let me just have a look. A little cut and a piece of chicken. Oh. It's great. Stop. As soon as that's... I can't take the noise from this. <sighs> okay. Almost there, huh? The bread? Almost there. Yeah, yeah. Bread's done. Is your I'm, arm getting I'm sore? I'm so excited to try this. Well, okay. a little bit. So watch. Beautiful. Oh, geez, it's hot. I know, I just cooked it. But still, it's still hot. And I don't mind saying it. <laughs> oh, the smell is really good. So here's what I want. I want chopped chicken, Caesar, bacon, salad. Nice, smart. Making all the pieces the same size. There you go. Salad and all. So some of these guys will throw here. Who doesn't like a little crunchy bread with their thing? A handful of the bacon. Oh my gosh. The chicken. Wow. Now like this. And okay, so maybe the whole Caesar thing has kind of gone out the window <laughs> and it's not really even that anymore. Put some Parmesan here, it would be great. And one last thing, some lemon juice. Nice. Mm. 
is going to add just a really nice little bite. And that seed will add some bite that I just heard drop in there. <laughs> All right. Mm. I can't wait. So let's see. Romaine, bacon, chicken, bread. Oh my God. For sure the lemon juice. I could have the salad every night. This could be my, my dinner time salad. Holy crap, is that good? Mm, everything. There's a little bit of bacon hot sauce in this dressing, the lemon juice on top, this, this applewood smoked pepper bacon. Mm. I love it. It's been a good day for live cast. Lynn's back. This is delicious. I'm making deviled eggs on Friday. My smoked salmon deviled eggs are maybe the best deviled eggs ever. We've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Tell your friends. Go to iTunes. Leave comments. And Blake, tell me why I'm a, uh, what was I? Douche? Something like that. I don't even Something, remember. Whatever he called me. So tell me why I am. All right. Thanks for watching with us. We'll see you next time.